Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you. And today I want to show you how I ultra tuned my Ruger 10 22 long rifle. Now this started out as a factory 1022 and then I upgraded some things which in the end to me it really doesn't matter it might to you but uh, I just want to show you how how I got an insane tight group and it's very consistent and the reason why this video came about is because I have been shooting a lot of 22 caliber air rifles PCPs exact past you know year or so and here recently I figured out how to tune a barrel so really doesn't matter what barrel it's from you know whether an air rifle or firearm or whatever I figured out how to tune it and so I want to share this information with you guys and hopefully if you've got an upgraded 1022 or factory this information can help you out and trying to figure out you know getting your gun shooting uh, really good and if it's already shooting good then you're then you're okay but if you're wanting it to shoot you know really tight groups uh, this information might help you out now as far as I know uh, this 1022 is the most accurate 1022 I've ever seen on video and in person and it's because I tune the barrel so it doesn't really matter whether you just put a drop-in barrel or receiver or none of that stuff really matters don't get me wrong quality is good but if it's not tuned especially for the round or bullet you're shooting it doesn't matter so I want to show you um, my target here now I call this a tuning box so the reason why I use this box is because I got different groups all the way around it which I'll take a picture of each individual group just to show you exactly what changed but I'll tell you also and all this was at 45 yards because my range currently would be 50 but it, um, it's not at the moment so 45 yards and the tightest group just to let you guys know with this tune uh, on this gun and I would call it ultra match because I've never seen a gun shoot this good especially a 1022 uh, 45 yards I'm getting five shots at 0.223 of an inch um, which is basically just 122 uh, bullet apart uh, so it is insanely tight and that was all these groups are using the same ammo CCI standard velocity 40 grain lead round nose that's pretty much the only thing I shoot through this gun um, to me the match grade ammo you know it might be a little more consistent but in the end result if your gun can shoot or I can get my gun to shoot this stuff for 347 a box it doesn't really matter to me what I'm shooting as long as I get it to shoot good so let me start off here by telling you what I did and each of these little boxes that I outlined is something different so number one here which I'll take a picture of the group to show you up close but number one there that was with just the 18 and a half inch heavy barrel just dropped in that that was it and what I have here is the Hogue stock so Hogue over molded stock that's all it is nothing special so no shooting scenes in this video but just to give you guys you know the pretty much critical information if you're trying to get your gun to shoot really good so that was with nothing done to the gun that was straight you know the barrel just dropped right in screwed into the V block and then done that was it shot I think it looked like 10 rounds or so. They started a pattern decent, but it wasn't good enough for me. I want it tight. Number two group size here. Um, show you what I did. So I, I messed with the actual, a lot of people are saying, you know, you need a, the bed, the rifle, and pillar, and all that stuff. So what I did was, instead of doing all that work first, I wanted to see exactly what this barrel would be doing fully free floated now as the barrel sits 
um, when you drop it into the stock, it, to me it is not fully free floated because it does have some spots touching it here and there. So what I did was I lifted it up out of the stock just a little bit and here's what I did. I put layers of masking tape underneath the barrel like right in this area to lift it up. There's a like an actual step or whatever you want to call it, a, a rib inside the stock that lifts the barrel up to keep it free floated all the way, all the way down. So I put a, basically a spacer on that rib to lift the barrel up even more. So that was, uh, this was number two. That's what I got with number two at the masking. Tape. So uh, it's getting different. You can see the change. But here's what will really throw you off. So. If you don't notice already here, I have electrical black tape wrapped around it. That is the sweet spot for this barrel. The next group I'm about to show you was having the black tape down here at the end because that's where it was kind of, when you look down the barrel and you can see the gap between the stock and the barrel, one side of the stock was kind of touching the barrel and the other side kind of wasn't. So I decided to put wrap it up and basically separate the barrel from the stock down here right at the end of the stock forearm and this is what happened that big spread vertical spread right there so what that means was the barrel was doing this when I was shooting the whole time the bullet was not coming out of the barrel consistently it was just whipping up and down vertical so to fix that problem, what I did was I moved the tape and all this is trial and error. So I'm not saying set in stone, you do this, your gun's gonna shoot lights out. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you do this and tinker with the gun, you're gonna have to shoot it because you can't reload rim fire. If you reload you know, center fire, you can get all this stuff pretty much without even messing with the barrel. That's what happens when you reload center fire. You can get the barrel to match up and everything. but if it's interfering with the stock, that's a different story. But anyway, so I moved the tape down um, instead of being down here because it was just flopping. So what I thought was, or my thought was to move the tape down because the barrel was just whipping inside the stock and it was touching it. That's what was causing the vertical spread up and down. And at 45 yards, that is a really big opening. I mean, or a big vertical spread. I mean, it's like, you know two inches or so at least so I move the tape down um, about two inches from the end you can see here and what that did was that stabilized the wave from the receiver to here to the point where the tapes at lifted the barrel up just a little bit I'll, I'll get good pictures and show you guys but it lifted the barrel up just a little bit to keep it even down here here's the next group That right there is pretty, you know, good within itself. I mean, that was, I think, what is that? I mean, that was, I think that was definitely less than a half an inch or so. That was definitely one MOA or less at 45 yards, which is 0 0.472 inches. So that was really good. I was kind of happy with that and pleased but I knew I could get tighter, <laughs> believe it or not. So that's with the electrical tape. Now, the reason why I have this washer and these grommets on the end here is because I read this article, which I'll post the link in the video description below, of where these, I think it was like an air gun research or scientist or somebody took a a bolt action gun and put it in a vise and it was basically um, a setup where you know if the barrel was totally free floated there was no stock you're just shooting it right out of a vise and they added weight to the barrel um, the barrel was like 24 inches long or something like that and the barrel had no stock on it it was fully free floated so um, they added weight to this barrel that I think they said it was uh, a 200 gram weight well the reason why I didn't add that the washer and the grommets don't weigh that much and I'll show you guys that so the big washer there and 
the grommets are uh, three quarters of an inch by like a, I think an inch and a quarter or something like that, two of them. And then the, uh, the washer itself is one inch inside diameter. So anyway, back to the article that I was reading, they added a 200 gram weight to the exact end of the barrel because it was, it was vertically whipping. And the, the claim in that article is that your group size, which this one pretty much fit the bill, that if your vertical and horizontal spread is pretty much the exact same, you cannot tune the gun anymore. It's, it's shooting perfect. So instead of just going with that, I wanted to try the weight to see if it made a big difference. And it shrunk the groups down, I mean, in half, literally. Um, with the weight on here, I knew that I would have to cut it down because the barrel was supported right here with the black tape touching the stock instead of the barrel itself touching the stock. So basically I cut that weight in half, or uh, yeah, about half because this, this washer weighs 85 grams and these grommets probably weigh about, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 a piece. And so that's around 100 grams or so. And believe it or not, with that weight on the end of the barrel, this gun is literally the most accurate 1022 I've ever shot. Um, what this gun was doing though is weird because um, I don't know if the barrel is just so tight because of these bullets that it would throw a cold bore shot. So I'd have to shoot it a couple times before I'd start noticing the groups to get really seasoned in. So right here is the most accurate group I've ever shot with this gun. That is five shots at 223 of an inch. And the outside shot there, the cold bore shot, like I said. And all this testing was done with CCI. <coughs> 40 grain lead round nose. And by the way, this stuff, in my opinion, is the closest match grade ammo you're going to get without the match grade cost. I ran this through my chronograph, and I think there was only like a 30-foot spread. 30-foot spread, and I was actually shooting above the advertised velocity, which is kind of rare, 1070 for this bullet, and I was shooting around 1100 with this gun. So a 30 foot spread at 1100 feet per second is nothing to really worry about. And as you can see there, uh, you know, if I keep shooting this gun, I'm sure it could be even tighter than that. But that is one, literally one bullet hole apart from each other. 223 of an inch, center to center. So anyways, guys, um, you know, in the end of it, um, you could spend a lot of money to try to get it to shoot good, but you know, I'd rather optimize with what I got and As this gun sits right now. I think the most I've got into the gun itself not the scope included is around $500 and uh, That's because of the stock the barrel um, The actual receiver itself buying the factory gun was 200 and something um, I did upgrade the bolt, but that really doesn't do anything for accuracy it's the Ruger target bolt which is 0.051 inch I believe head spaced um, and then I have the BX trigger so in my opinion all these mods that I've already done without even tuning the barrel um, don't really do much now that I think about it but anyway if you guys are already uh, you know got all your stuff set up the way you want you know I'm not gonna diss anybody that got the rifle to set up the way they want, whether it's factory or aftermarket or whatever. I personally think it's a waste of money now because I can tune the barrel. But, um, you know, I would rather uh, have an aftermarket barrel shoot good, especially if I'm going to spend that money on it. And, uh, you know, to me, these groups beforehand, that is not good. Uh, not good at all, especially for a gun when you put this barrel on it should be you know match grade and all that And a lot of people say oh dropping a barrel in um, It's not gonna make a difference 
Well, part of that's true, but if you could tune it now and take the information from this video and help you out, um, I think you could be shooting that good with yours, 45, 50 yards or whatever. So, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, comment below in the part two, I think I'm going to configure the gun back to the factory configuration and see if I can get the gun to shoot just as good with the factory barrel and everything, with the wood stock, everything. So, anyways guys, I'm going to end on that note. I appreciate you watching as always. And I uh, hope you like the rifle and the setup. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.